Okay, so uh, let me give you first a short background of this uh, research we are conducting. Uh, we are, uh, we started to co-teach a course in internal communication at the University of Lugano in Switzerland. And when we started to develop course materials, we found out that actually as long as you teach internal communication as a part of a larger subject, public relations, corporate communication, whatever, everything looks very fine. There is enough material for that if you contextualize it. The moment we started to teach it as a subject in itself, we found out not many material available, particularly not of the academic quality. So we started to think about what is really going out there. And we went first to the literature in the review and what we found out. First of all, if you go through the management literature historically, you can see that the early writers on management, like Taylor, like Chester Bernard, and so on and so forth, focused on communication as the key management problem. And, and nearly half of their writings is about communication. If you look at the contemporary writers in management, communication is only a technical tool they're mentioning, usually. So communication is somehow disappearing slowly, slowly from the central stage of the management literature, but not only that, internal communication in particular is actually being completely contested by all kinds of uh, other uh, disciplines. Now, we have, as already mentioned, uh, uh, industrial relations, as it, as, or as today is called, human relations, actually being one of those territories which are claiming internal communication uh, belongs to us. Then we have marketing perspective. Internal marketing literature is booming. So you have them claiming that this is uh, their uh, disciplines. Of course, from the public relations perspective, everybody would say this is uh, our sub-discipline. And, and if you want to get engaged in that, this is uh, where you should look at. Then we have change management, which is developing a huge production of, of books and articles claiming internal communication uh, belongs to us. Of course, those from academia know the internal battles between these different disciplines at universities and know that there is organizational communication as a completely independent line of uh, teaching existing with their own uh, materials claiming that internal communication uh, belongs to them. So from the disciplinary perspective, it's very confusing situation out there and uh, this is uh, what uh, we were uh, uh, concerned about. While on the other side, if we look what is going on in practice, we can clearly see the emergence of something which is coming out of in-house journalism and, and, and editorship into something new. We can see that, for example, internal communication departments are emerging as an, as an item you can identify today. Several decades ago, if you would be analyzing large organizations around Europe, you couldn't find enough internal communication departments. Now there are. There are people who are self-identifying themselves with internal communication and they're forming organizations. Uh, so there's something is going on out there and we have uh, decided for that reason actually to try to uh, get through all that uh, 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 unclear water, so to say, to see who is really, uh, what kind of fish really is there in that uh, uh, pond and what we can find. Also, if you are trying to identify the terms uh, to use, academic literature has all kinds of them. We could go into dozens of different terms that exist in academic literature. We are not talking about here people just using uh, lay language. We are talking about academics describing exactly the same thing with dozens of all kinds of, of terms. So it's, it's, it's a mess out there. And actually, I'm happy that we have this conference so that we can try to some kind of galvanizing process to, to, to figure out what uh, really is going on. So we decided that we are going to do a Delphi study. Now, as you know, Delphi study was invented by Rent Corporation in the United States when they were trying to figure out what options are available to United States in the case of the nuclear warfare. So you cannot empirically test it. Uh, the basic thing with Delphi studies is that you have an unstructured problem out there and you are trying to figure out what is going on. So what you do usually, you select uh, informed uh, respondents uh, who are educated, who are uh, embedded into the problem, who will help you through the process of interviewing, clarify the situation. Usually uh, there are two options uh, you get. You, you make, 
you select, first you select your respondents, then you go through usually three or more uh, cycles of questioning. And through that process, you either get a consensus of those uh, interviewees about the problem, or you get a clear consensus that there are two or three clear options on which they don't agree, but at least you know at the end of the day, okay, we have those three options available, now let's work on them. So that's what we are trying here. So we decided to take the uh, 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 European Association of FAIA as our uh, organization, which we are going to take into the focus, because they are now claiming to bring together specialists in internal communication in Europe. So we decided that we are going to ask national representatives in the FAIA about internal communication, their self-perception, and uh, uh, what uh, uh, they are seeing. So we designed the questionnaire, we agreed. Steve helped us uh, to get in touch with them. So we are trying to figure out what are they seeing as internal communication, and we are trying to uh, clarify that matter. This is a very strict time limit, I have to say. I mean, I'm one of the authors, but I... <laughs> okay, so um, we are only going to present the results of the first wave, hoping that uh, we'll get through the second and the third wave in the next month or so. Uh, the first logical question that we asked of our participants was their definition or the vision that they have what internal communication is in its essence. So all of their definitions could basically be uh, categorized into one of the two main categories. Either it was a technical spe speciality in charge of communication within organizations, or it was a management function. For some of the respondents, it was both, but most of them agreed that it was all communication within organizations. I had to put one of the uh, responses here. Uh, it was a participant who just said it was nothing more than a staff magazine and its production. Uh, the other part of the definition included the question of what internal communication is in charge of, and as you can see, there are various answers, but most of them focused on information dissemination, communication, engagement of employees, and such. Uh, I have to say that more than half of the participants had a one-way approach to communication and actually believe that internal communication is in charge of aligning employees to organizational purposes, goals, and strategies. So it's not so much a two-way process as it is a one-way process from the management towards uh, all elements of the organization. Uh, we wondered about the relationship of internal communication and other management disciplines, and of course, human resources were mentioned, uh, marketing was mentioned, public relations was mentioned less than I supposed, and only one or two participants actually connected internal communications to public relations. We wondered if the practitioners saw internal communications as a theory-based field, and most of them actually think uh, it's a practice-based discipline, but of course it has to rely on theory to a certain extent, and the elements of the theory that it uses are psychology, communication, and management science. The knowledge and skills that are needed in internal communication uh, revolve around business skills, coaching skills, but most of the respondents agree that it does involve a lot of management skills as well. We wondered if internal communication towards, it, uh, according to our uh, respondents, was a separate research field, and uh, only one replied no. All the others actually believed, again, to a certain extent, it is. Uh, as for the current issues in internal communications, the ones that were mentioned uh, mostly were connected to crisis and change communication, a lot of new digital social media, and then other uh, connected issues as well. I'm glad we have the written part of this paper because I'm really running through <laughs> the results. The names, as Dan already mentioned, we wanted to see which one was the most appropriate description of the field. Uh, there was an issue with singular and plural, and we finally decided that we are going to adopt the singular version, internal communication, without the S, but the respondents used all of these names in the singular and plural versions, so business communication, corporate communication, employee engagement, as was mentioned already today, uh, all the way down to internal public relations. And uh, in the end, we wondered if internal communication is a part of human resource management, public relations, marketing, corporate communications, or a practical field of its own. I have to say that 
even the practitioners don't really believe it's a field of, his, of its own as yet. They do think that maybe in the future it will develop in this direction, but so far it's a part of one of the surrounding disciplines. And so basically yeah. we are dealing with the fuzzy logic, so to say. It's nothing is clearly defined yet. We are entering into a very interesting uh, territory, but what is emerging now and what we are now in the second wave, we, we are already starting to, to with the basic organization of the situation for the third way, which is already appearing as an interesting issue, is going to be also the question of internal differentiation because it's obvious not only that people have completely different perceptions uh, and, and understanding of what internal communication is, but that also within internal communication we can talk about different sub-disciplines of internal communication as some people are specializing in in, 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 in crisis communication, some are specializing in media man internal media management, some are specializing in internal branding and, 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 and missionary work, so to say, in internal communication, some in coaching and so on and so forth. So it's not only a question of what is going on with internal communication as an entity, but also how is that entity differentiating and structuring within itself, which may be important from one side from the teaching purposes for us, because we will have to think about how to uh, bring that type of knowledge to our students, but also for the practice, because uh, when, when considering how to organize uh, uh, internal communication departments or, or the internal communication function, you will have to consider that uh, different uh, functions or sub-functions that exist within the function of internal communication. Thank you.